Hi, I'm Lennon English. I'm a singer, songwriter, and uh, musician. I'm born and raised uh, in a place that is so bad you can't drink the water. Um, my uh, earthly home is Flint, Michigan, uh, and my time there, uh, it was interesting. It helped set a foundation for who I am. And uh, I was surrounded by hardworking, strong people who had endured quite a bit in their own lifetime. So to grow up in that space and be carrying on a legacy of people who have managed to uh, to create something out of nothing is a perfect space for a songwriter to come from. Uh, when Mr. Wilson reached out to me about speaking on that cause, I thought it was a, uh, I thought it my duty. I thought it was something necessary. Uh, as a songwriter, I've always looked at uh, myself as an observer who is here to see and witness and bear witness to all the things that are happening in my experience and then tell the truth about what I see in that space. And then, <laughs> and then behind that, figure out a way to speak into existence what I would like to see. So um, when it comes to institutional racism in the United States, the drug war in particular is something that is used as a tool to uh, demonize and criminalize people that look like me. And that's just wrong. Um, there is this ongoing conversation or ongoing perception, narrative, and media that black men use drugs and that black men are these criminals and that we are responsible for the ills of the American society. And that's just not the case. Uh, the FBI uh, puts out a report every year called the Uniform Crime Report. And it details by demographic the number of reported crimes, <laughs> which is also another fascinating thing if you would get to look into. But the number of reported crimes uh, to the FBI and to the law enforcement nationwide is tracked by the FBI every year since, like, since they've existed. It was like 1908. Every year since then, white males especially, but white people in general, have been responsible for anywhere from 67 to 72 percent of all violent crime and drug-related crime in the United States. So when you look at the numbers, you can tell that there's something amiss because you're talking about how is it 70 percent of the violent offenders, drug offenders, are white people but a majority of the time being done for those same crimes, the majority of the people being abused and accused under those same crimes, the proportionality to, to, between the black race, the brown races, is completely off, which shows you that there's a targeted effort to, uh, to destroy black families. Quite, plain, quite plainly, the drug war is one of the ways, one of the many tools in which uh, institutional racism uh, works through our society to to oppress black families, to oppress black families, and it's something that we just really got to speak on. Um, to bring that to a personal level, uh, the city I grew up in, Flint, Michigan, uh, there's the war on drug, the war on drugs happening right there in Flint, Michigan. But what does that cause? What does that mean for white people? It doesn't mean anything. It just says, hey, you should supposed to be scared of this. But what does it mean for black people? It means for me, as an eight-year-old, I get pulled aside by police, <laughs> frisked to see if I got drugs on me. I'm a kid, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There were 32 kids on my street growing up. And literally, the drug, the war on drugs put so many of those young people behind bars for smoking a J for uh, nothing. Some of them are dead, some of them are in jail, some of them are in a space where they haven't done a crime, but because they're black or because they're brown, they can be accused, they can be framed, they can be scared into it. And just the litigation itself, when you're talking about 38% of the city of Flint lived below the poverty line in the 90s, it's about 38% of the people in the city. That means 38% of the people in the city can't afford lawyers, can't afford bail. And who are the police arresting? They're arresting primarily black men. So that means the black men of those families are not able to work. 
they're not able to bring any revenue. And so what happens? The rest of the family falls into even deeper poverty, which causes even more trauma over and over again in our community. This has to stop. What is called the drug war in the United States is not a war on drugs. If it really was a war on drugs, then all of those airplanes that the Air Force tracks flying in and out of American airspace, because believe me, as a United States Air Force intelligence, former intelligence analyst, I can tell you the United States knows every single plane that flies in its territory. The planes that are flying drugs into the United States <laughs> aren't owned by black people. They're owned by white people. So you're talking about a system that's saying it's a war on drugs. But the people that are the source of the drugs, the whole transportation system that supports that measure, is all owned by white people in the government. If it really was a war on drugs, you wouldn't be in the streets. You would be cutting the supply line. And so until we see a situation where the United States government has fair policing practices, where they have a, a legitimate a legitimate legal system which can protect and serve all of us, then it, the entire thing is a farce. It's just put in place to control us all. Because not only are they controlling the people that are, that they're aggressive towards, all those lives that were lost from the kids that just lived on my block, half the kids that lived on my block are either dead or in jail. It's that simple. Kids. And most of them didn't live, didn't live past 25, 26 years old just because of their skin color, just because of their, their class and they're considered lower to middle, lower, low, cla low class or low to middle class. What the, f what the fuck is a low to middle class? You're telling me I'm less of a class of a person because I don't have the same kind of wealth as you? Because somebody injected drugs or other mechanisms into my society, into my community, to where I can't function with the same equal opportunities that everybody else does, that's insanity. So I say all to say this, um, we are living in a time where we have an opportunity to change everything. We have right now, we are at the precipice of the same type of republic that existed in ancient Rome, the same type of republic that existed in ancient Greece, slave-built republics, all of them met their demise. There has been no time in history which a society which built on the blacks of slaves, if they did not correct those spaces with those slaves, that society did not continue to exist. It just didn't. And this, this republic empire that enslaves us, is the drug war is just one of the many tools that it uses to do so. Um, I believe that all power should go to the people. It should be the desires of the people that regulate and tell what government is and what government should and should not do. And until it is such, we've got a lot of work to do, but we gotta be the change that we wanna see. So as a songwriter who wants to see a specific type of change, the change that I wanna see is everyone to wake up and recognize that suffering, the suffering of others, is not just the suffering of others, it's the suffering of us all. You just lack the empathy to be able to feel what that feels like and feel what that looks like. So know thyself. Study the seven liberal arts and sciences. Study the things in addition to whatever your gift is. Study the things that are going to enhance your mind to the place where you can move past social engineering, where you can create social economic groups that further the interests of the communities that you live in. Buy black, support black businesses support women-owned businesses. These are the tools and these are the things that we can do to start that can create exactly the earth that we like to see. We're earthlings first. These nations and the lines and the rules that make them up are all imaginary stuff that we made up. But the earth, the planet, and all the life here is all real. The earth is abundant. There is no scarcity. When it comes to what we have and what we need. Just the United States makes enough stuff for everybody to live in the lap of luxury and have everything they need for the next 10 years. Billionaires, the same billionaires that are benefiting off this war on drugs by these prison systems that are for-profit prisons that are literally making $60,000, $70,000, 
$100,000 per head, that is slavery when the body of a human being becomes a dollar monetary amount. Whether it's $10 on a stage in front of 100 white people in the 1700s, or whether it's a black body in a jail, that is a check and an invoice against the government receipt that our tax dollars are paying for. The war on drugs is a farce. The system itself is a farce. The nations themselves are imaginary constructs that we can take down whenever we want to. Just like we say, you know what? We're done with this. We're going to do the right thing, tear this thing down, and start over. We can do that. We're humans. We're powerful. We have the ability. We have the knowledge. We have the logistics. <laughs> we have it. All we're waiting for is us. So I would encourage you to wake up again, know thyself. Study this planet you're on. Study humanity. Study the people who look like you. Study the people who don't look like you. Study the history and try your damnedest not to repeat it because there's some stuff that we are repeating that we just should have already learned by now as a civilization. Um, I personally am an idealist, uh, so I think it's possible. I believe in it. I hope for it. And I think if each generation figures out how to fix one or two things, then at least we made the world a little bit better place for the next generation. Um, so. I say all that to say black power, black excellence, black unity, and uh, as long as we're continuing to better ourselves, to better oneself is to better the world. A blissful slumber, all societals are under. Loss and lack of amazement can cause the mind to wonder. Usurp the work from workers whose lives you value worse than the value of the diamonds they unearth. Veins no longer carrying the water of life for unto all to disperse. What's a bowel to a consonant if the positions are constant to reverse? My new to minuscule, life itself is fractional on earth. Parts of particles place fear on alert. Desensitized masses protest out of hurt. But emotions don't get considered in the courtroom. There's no jurisdiction for feelings. Conviction comes towards the brokenhearted, whom has never experienced healing. That much more forceful, gavels fall without reason. The judge, by decision, is guilty of treason. The glandular don't hand me, hold me, but can't stand me. Shanked by rounded birds all surrounding. I see dead people all around me. Fetus is getting fucked up by needles. Injection closes the door for the unplanned family. Abortion is a new form of parenting. It's apparent you parents are riding the mules for shits and giggles. Pure, unadulterated jackassery. The government factories are mass producing your faculties. Factually speaking, the dead of mind only can practice fractional thinking. Refractive fractals leading unto the deceasing. This planetary compunction is leading to planetary depleting from predetermined, pre programmed, forced upon deceiving. Hmm. Think about it. it, makes sense.
truth. Uh, born and raised in Houston, Texas. Uh, went to college and uh, got my uh, degree in business entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship in Jackson State University and uh, in Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, ever since then, man, um, you know, I've just been kind of an activist using the things that I've learned in college to kind of come back and help my people, you know, set up their affairs, their estates, their wills, their trusts, and, you know, so that they could take commercial control over their affairs and, you know, their assets in life so that they can, you know, pass on generational wealth and have something to, you know, leave their children besides tennis shoes and, and clothes and things, you know, so. It's a little bit uh, about myself, man, and uh, beyond that, just uh, I love to be an entrepreneur and create things that, you know, I, I think of and manifest them in reality that can actually change the world and the reality that we live in. Well, uh, I mean, just the impact in the war on drugs, I mean, I, I don't know too many people from the melanated community that didn't have, you know, many aunties or uncles, uh, you know, parents or, you know, somebody who wasn't personally involved, you know, in that crack pandemic era and you know uh, I mean like I said myself personally I definitely have family members and I mean I've had friends just even throughout life uh, who even died you know from uh, from oxy you know cotton and different things like that and different drugs uh, so I mean I've definitely seen the effects and how you know even the music and the culture and everything is all kind of played into you know how you know this is become like a lifestyle now for for children and you know youth period you know uh to to you know take the drugs so i mean you know it's just been crazy because I, I have many personal family and friends like i said that you know just even become rappers over the years you know you've just seen music change you know it used to be about so much content it used to be about flavor it used to have you know heart soul music and you know things of that nature but now it's just about you know uh so much of the rappers is in, into popping mollies and 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 doing the drugs on every single track and it's like now it's it's cool to get you know high you know i mean it's cool to you know uh it, it, it's cool to be an addict now you know the addict culture has become something that's become glorified and i think that's what become you know has become so detrimental to our community and um and just beyond seeing many of my friends that have passed away from doing drugs uh i mean just seeing so so many of them who've even you know got entrapped in the, the selling part of it you know and have been in jail and entrapped by it i mean i've had numerous homes uh friends that you know have served years in jail uh and you know it's just crazy to see how you know not even knowing the law and you know of course playing the whole drug and the trap game and how you know really all of this is really truly unconstitutional but yet our people are still getting locked up put behind bars we're getting you know we're killing ourselves over their own drugs that they're you know chemically creating and dropping off in the hood at that but you know it's just it's so many things that have affected you know myself personally and the community that i come from uh seeing my partners and friends going through constant in and out of trouble with dealing with drugs and or even selling the drugs or getting caught up you know whatever so yeah man it's, it's affected my life tremendously and that's kind of uh one of the main reasons why i also you know am an activist and do the things that i do to you know help change our community the best way i can possibly yes sir uh, people can find out more about me on iselflawandmaster.com. Again, it's iselflawandmaster.com. And uh, yeah, man, we're just all about teaching and helping people learn how to master thyself. Uh, learn how to, you know, take those skills and learn how to take control over your life. Learn how to use your abilities, your gifts, and learn how to create manifestation and, and generation, generational wealth out of that, out of your gifts, man. And um, yeah, man, just helping our people, uh, you know, like I said, just to learn how to love themselves, man. Um, this is more than just paperwork. This is a mental, physical, and spiritual evolution that we are, you know, helping guide people on. And, and honestly, none of us can do it for you. This is something that you yourself have to choose that I want to evolve with. You know, we can only be here to, to help show you through demonstration what we've done, you know. But at the end of the day, becoming great and, 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 and really living, because a lot of people are existing, but very few of us are living. You know, uh, the only truly way to live is, is really knowing thyself, taking control over your life. And I mean, um, I mean, whether it's drugs, whether it's, you know, battling, whatever it is, man, I mean, it all starts with first taking control and knowing that you, the mind, is the most powerful thing that you have on this earth. You know, and if you can take control over that, you can take control over anything and change your life and turn it all the way around. So, I mean, that's what the whole remedy and the whole experience is about, where we're totally getting people to transform the, their lives just by 
taking control over it, you know, because we've been born in, into a corporate system and we never ever actually had control over our perspective, over our mind, over the way we eat, the way we think, the way we move, none of that, just because we've only been living what they've been telling us to be. Now this is a chance where we actually get to know who we are and go within and actually do what makes us feel beautiful, you know, and do what, you know, was dope to us. So anyway, I can go on a tangent forever, man, but you know, it's just all about, I want to teach our people to, to learn to love thyself, man, and, and the remedy is going within and knowing that we can change everything on the out if we love thyself. You know what I'm saying? So that's your boy, Brother Truth.